Good morning. We want to thank you all for coming today. And um, Roxanne, uh, I'm uh, Shawnee. I'm um, Aunt Marlene's niece. And Roxanne, her daughter, uh, was quite the poet. I'm going to take this off. And she um, had written a poem about her mom that we found last night. So I just would like to read this for you guys today. Um, it's called A Mother Poem. Most poems about mother put her on a pedestal, making motherhood a fiction and ignoring what is real. They speak of her perfection, of love and joy unfettered. Well, I say that's just silly. Imperfection's really better. If anyone is perfect, they have no walls to leap, no trials to pass over, and they're never losing sleep. But a less than perfect person is one who has go gone strong and learned from their mistakes and all their trials that are gone. Such perfect imperfection exists within my own mother, friend, and teacher who kept my childhood home. At the time, like any child, I thought she was most unfair. I welled about mistreatment, not seeing what was there. But when I had grown older and found her trials my own, I gained a new respect through all the sorrows I had never known. All the things she went through and still went on her way make me wish that I was stronger, for I can't do things her way. But though her strength defines her, it is not her only trait. It's not the only virtue that makes my mother great. She's taught me love and charity, for these she has in droves. See, she touched so many lives before, she went to wait above. Good works have been her hallmark for as long as she has been. Though I haven't witnessed all of them, I admire the ones I've seen. I know that all who hear these words have been touched by her life, this perfect imperfection of mother, friend, and wife. So now as she is watching, and knows the things we do, let's not cry but celebrate. You know she'd want us to. In loving tribute by her daughter, Ro Roxanne R. Lee, I just want to take a minute to say what a great influence that Auntie's been in my life. And I really appreciate everything she's done. And I appreciate all of you to be here to celebrate her. And we just want to invite anyone who'd like to come up and say anything that they can at this time. Thank you. Those that don't know me, I'm uh, Marlene's brother, John. I always thought she was going to outlast me. It was really a surprise. I um, don't have a lot of words to say. I, I, I think back a few years ago when her sister Cindy passed away, basically from the same problems. Marlene was very caring. She loved her children. She loved her family. She shared lots and lots of stories about Russell and Rockney and Roxanne. And I'm going to print them. Rockney and Russell. I'm going to tell your secrets. But we appreciate everybody coming out to celebrate her. 
she was a very good woman. I've got a lifetime of memories, uh, a lifetime of irritants. She keeps reminding me that before there was a remote control TV, I'd ask her to change it. And when she wouldn't do it, I'd pull over by her hair, take her hand and make her change the TV. Now, I don't remember doing that. You know, I mean, I guess I was a terrible brother. But we had a lot of good times. You know, she was a world traveler. She seemed to enjoy the places she went. And she's been struggling with health problems for a long time. We love her very much. And we appreciate you folks for coming. Thank you. What do you want to say? What? And tell them that Nana was your favorite. She just wanted to come up and talk in a microphone <laughs> about Nana. You sure are going to miss Nana, huh? There's so much I could say, but I can't say it. <sighs> do you want to say something, Cash? Nana just loved these two. She took them everywhere. They did everything together with Nana. <sighs> no matter what, she's always been there. <sighs> Sorry, I can't get it.
I'm, I'm Corrine, and I've been Marlene's very dearest and best. She's been my very dear and bear, best friend for about at least 25 years. And I just want you to know there is no one, no one else like her when it comes to friendship and loyalty and someone who can always be there for you and someone you can trust completely. And she had the most spiritual and godlike love for everyone and and for those, her family, especially her family. Oh, and for Cash and for Lily. They meant the world to her. And this is the first time I've met Lily and, I, and, and Cash, and they are dear. But she had such compassion and just a sixth sense about knowing when people had a need. <laughs> We, when I lived in near Norco, and we'd go out shopping, and I'd spend five or ten dollars, and she'd spend about a hundred bucks or something at Walmart, and then we'd go over to um, Del Taco, and she loved her Del Taco, and I wasn't I wasn't that big a fan of Del Taco, but I loved the company, so I went along, and and there's this. They had a patio out in front of Del Taco, and there's this woman, and she's shaking her hand and walking around and yelling at the sky. And Marlene looks at me, and she says, she's hungry. And she got up and went and bought her a meal and then took it out to her. And the lady just looked at her and sat down and calmed down and ate. It was like Marlene knew instinctively, or the Lord was telling her what what um, this woman needed and I don't know I was always impressed with that she always 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 had her arm around someone or or in some situation she would always be so calming and charitable to others and we'd talk on the phone for hours I'd come out and my husband would say, you were on there almost four hours. <laughs> and, but it just felt so good because she was like, she was like my sister or like my family or she's like a part of my heart. And I, I, I don't know, right now it just feels like it's one of her trips she would take to Richfield for, for a couple of months. And, I don't know what I'm going to do, but she would always say, it's all right, it's all good, it's all good. And we would just had such zany and good times, and we were on a family errand for her, and we were coming home or on our way up to Ventura, Santa Barbara, and she called me and wanted me to go with her. We went up there, and... All of a sudden she realized we're on the coast highway and the coast highway is going like this or something. You know, a big curve. And she's all, oh, I made a mistake, I'm wrong way. And she made a U-turn in the middle of the coast highway with seven lanes of cars coming at her either way. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of driving where I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and so I'm all started to freak a little and she'd say, shut up. Do you have a quarter? I'll drop you off. <laughs> just be, she didn't say shut up, but just you be quiet. <laughs> so I will never forget that. But we, she is a wonderful, wonderful lady, and I am so happy for her that she is with Rocky, and that she is, she was greeted by Roxanne and Roxanne's eyes. She can see now in the heavens, and. Oh, I'm so so grateful and happy. Oh, selfishly, I'm not so happy for me. But, um, you know, like she says, it's all good. I keep telling myself it's all good. So I wanted to leave that with you. Thank you.
following procession, turn your lights on bright, turn your flashes on. We're going to go down fourth west to the freeway access, go out and catch the freeway, and go over to the old one, take the exit, let's go to the cemetery. So uh, at this point, uh, protocol in the church is now we don't do anything with the bail, we just look at the way it is. So at this point, we're going to close the casket. Oh, yes, and there are sack lunches right out here as we go to the uh, take the casket out. So everybody grab, I think there's enough for everybody. So make sure you get something. John, if you want to, you bet. Yeah. <coughs> you
Good afternoon. I'm Robert Taylor. I was Marlene's bishop. It's my privilege to be here with you. So sorry for your loss. I really loved and respected both Marlene and Rockney. Um, I've known them for years and, and appreciated their friendship and camaraderie. Uh, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and dedicate this grave for Marlene. Our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, and with the authority of the Melchizedek priesthood which I hold, I dedicate this grave as the final resting place for Marlene Lee. That this can be a place of peace, that this can be a place undisturbed until the resurrection when her body and spirit again reunite in a perfect form. We thank the Heavenly Father for the life that she lived and for the good that she did, for the example of kindness and compassion that she showed, for the example of friendship that she was to others, for the example of love, for the compassion and service that she gave. We pray, Heavenly Father, for her loved ones here, that thou would comfort them, bless them with thy spirit, protect them in their travels. We say these things now and dedicate this grave to this end in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, that concludes the services. Thank you.